people know here on the show, I like to share things, memories, and of course, people that I truly believe should be highlighted. Those that have shaped our entertainment landscape for years and then seemingly through no fault of their own have slightly fallen out of favour. Not by dedicated fans, of course, but by simply the fact that it's just times move on, times change. We all have our favourites, don't we, that we bought and we remember. As we've often said here also, it's lovely when you comment in the sort of comment section below about things you bought and said, oh, that was my first record, or yes, I remember that. It just evoked so many wonderful memories. This particular lady, Dame Gracie Fields, it was, in fact, a superstar of the 1930s, 40s, came back with a bang in the 50s, and then even re-emerged into the hippie chicky 60s. And this is all thanks to a very good friend of mine who was instrumental in bringing her back uh, in 1968 to the Batley Variety Club. Absolutely. Alan was the general manager who told me that, you know, he was there when she made a return. Now, for those that don't know about Gracie Fields, she was a phenomenon, the biggest star in the world for a period. The highest paid woman in films in the 1930s went over to Hollywood. Not the same success over there, but songs like Sally and, of course, her operatic arias like Ivan Maria really made her her fame favourite, not just with legions of fans, but also members of the British monarchy. Too. The reason why I'm mentioning this is it's 125 years this year to her birth date and sadly over 40 years since we sadly lost her. Her very final performance was at the London Palladium in November 1978 in front of the then late and beautiful Queen Mother. At a very special request, I was told, because this was a very special evening. And the Queen Mother had no idea that Gracie was going to come on and do the very final song of the evening, naturally stealing the show. I must tell you, though, about her stint at the Battle of Variety, because it was fascinating. What happened was this. They booked her and she said, look, I'm not sure people will want to come and see me. This was the era of the Beatles, Donovan, that sort of thing. She packed the place out for two weeks solid and allowed people to eat fish and chips during her performance. After all, she said, I was born on top of a fish and chip restaurant. Why would I stop it? It's one of my favourite foods. A true, true superstar. And as I say, it's nice to remember these people because they really did shape our entertainment landscape. She's possibly not that well remembered now to the younger generation, but as everything gets rediscovered from time to time, one of her very famous recordings is currently being used on an ad. Yes, out in Thailand, no less. So you see, you never know where you re-emerge in the land of show business. But the bottom line is Gracie Fields became literally a superstar from very humble beginnings, but her unique talent, and more importantly, a brilliant sense of humor and the ability to connect with audiences around the world on so many different levels made sure that somehow, somewhere, she truly never will be forgotten. And this 125th year of her birth, isn't it nice to remember these people from time to time? Those that have gone before us and, of course, left behind such a brilliant legacy. If you get the opportunity, do look Gracie Fields up on YouTube right here. There's some wonderful performances. But the bottom line is, a story is as intriguing as any Agatha Christie novel. I'll leave it there. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.